Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to get the game eFootball 2024 working on the Apple Silicon Mac. So there is no Mac version of this game, so therefore we have to run the Windows version and we're going to be doing this through a piece of software called Crossover. And as you can see, the game doesn't run too badly, especially considering that this is a free-to-play game and it's a DirectX 11 Windows game running through several translation layers to get it working on Apple Silicon hardware. And in this video today, I want to show you how to get this working. So we have a standard crossover Windows installation, but we also have a few fixes, including the full screen fix and a controller fix as well, so that you can get controllers working on this game. And I'm going to show you the full process from start to finish, installing crossover, installing Steam and installing eFootball 2024, getting all of these fixes working and playing the game as well as possible on any Apple Silicon hardware. So the first thing I'm going to do is to click on the link at the top of the description for my affiliate link for crossover. If you click the link and make a purchase, then I'll make a small commission and you'll be helping to support this channel and the content that I create. So once you've clicked on the link in the description, we'll be taken to the store page or you can go to codeweavers.com and click on buy now. I do recommend making a purchase of Crossover Plus, which comes with 12 months support. If you want to get a discount, then make sure to use the promo code Apple Gaming Wiki New, just apply here, and then you're going to get a 20% discount. And anyway, once you're ready, you can click the buy now button and then you can go ahead and fill out your details. Alternatively, if you want to try this out, you can also go to the Code Weavers website, click the try now button, and then you can fill out these details and get a fully featured 14 day free trial. So that's what we're going to do today. Here we're downloading Crossover 23.5, which is the latest at the time of recording. So once crossover is downloaded we're going to go to finder and then we're going to go to our downloads folder we want to find our crossover zip file here so all we need to do is double click it's going to extract and then we have the crossover app here we're going to drag and drop this and put this into our applications folder once that's copied over we'll click on applications and then we're going to scroll until we find the crossover app so go ahead and double click here it's saying crossover is an app downloaded from the internet are we sure we want to open press open so once this is open we've got the option to install applications and games so the first thing we're going to do is to download steam so click on the steam icon here we'll do a search for it then we're going to click on install steam it's going to download and install steam into a brand new windows 10 64-bit bottle here we're just going to say yes to installing these various fonts a lot of progress is going to happen in the background. You don't have to click anything in particular. So now we're going to go through the Windows Steam setup. So just click Next, select your language, select the default installation. Now we're going to allow this to run Steam. So this is downloading a 300 megabyte update. Just let that finish. So now we have the Steam login screen. We can log in with our username and password, or we can scan the QR code with the Steam app on a smartphone. So now we're logging in. And now we're in the Windows version of Steam. And if you want to progress any further, what I'd also advise you to do is to shut down Steam so that we can change some of the graphics settings within crossover. Basically, we need to quit out of Steam, press exit here. So now that the Steam bottle has been created, we can just change some settings here. What I advise you to do is to turn on D3D Metal, which is Game Porting Toolkit's translation layer. And then we're going to go ahead and turn on M-Sync, which is a Mac specific alternative to E-Sync. And this is going to help improve performance as well. And once that's ready, we're going to double click on Steam and log in again. So once we're in the Windows version of Steam, we're going to go to do a search for eFootball. So we're going to type in eFootball and then we're going to download eFootball 2024. So this is the latest version of the time recording and we're going to add this to our Steam library. So go ahead and press play game here or add to library and then we're going to go ahead and download the game. So just press install. It's going to download 44 gigabytes of data. Press and accept the end user licensing agreement. And then once that's done, it's going to start the download process. It's going to take a little bit of time depending on the speed of your internet connection. Once the game is downloaded, this download button becomes a play button and we're ready to launch. So just so we also need to change a launch setting as well in order to get full screen to work correctly. So we just right click or control click on here, go to properties, and then we're going to type in dash full screen under launch options here. So this is gonna allow full screen and windowed modes to work correctly. Just close this. And you also might wanna pair a controller as well. So just go to Apple system settings and then go to the Bluetooth settings and make sure that you have a Bluetooth controller pair. So for example, here I'm going to hold on the option key and then the home button. And this is gonna put my DualSense controller into pairing mode, so it's flashing here. And then on my Mac here, I can see under nearby devices, I can connect this. And then my DualSense controller is now paired. It's got a solid light and we're ready to play the game. So as well, what I'm gonna do is to disable Steam inputs. We're gonna to go to properties and then go to controllers and then I'll press disable Steam input. And then here we're gonna play the game. So here it's going to install some dependencies like the .NET framework, just let that finish. So here we have the option to change some of the graphics settings. And what I'm gonna do here is to select windowed full screen mode so that it takes the screen resolution, or you can change this to windowed mode if you wanted to. So you're gonna go ahead and launch the game, press okay. 
So it might take a bit of time for this to launch. It took about two minutes for this to actually launch, so just be patient. So because we have the full screen option, we can press this green button here to full screen the game. And if you want to get back to that, you can just put your mouse cursor at the top of the screen and then you can unfull screen it as well. I'm going to keep it as full screened. We're going to agree to the terms and conditions. And now the DualSense controller is going to work in game. Now we've applied the Steam input fix where we disable Steam input. That's all working within the menus and within the game. So as you can see, the game doesn't run too badly on my MacBook Pro with the M3 Max chip. Obviously, if you have a lower end Mac, for example, the M1, then you're going to have to lower the settings quite a lot more. And you might have to play a few matches before the game is much more smooth. So there's shader compilation stutter, which will go away after a while if you've played a few matches in the game. Performance I would describe as fine because it's running through three translation layers, that is Windows to Mac OS API calls. We have DirectX 11 to Metal, and we have x86 to ARM64. So considering the fact that we're running through three different translation layers, it doesn't run too badly on Apple Silicon Max. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. I've got lots of other video tutorials like this on my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Yeah. Kind of where they wanted, yet somehow he's worked the scoring position when it didn't see him on. It's really crafty business, that.